When it comes to your ski equipment, the most important equipment decision you're going to make is your ski boots. For performance, warmth, and comfort, getting the right boot that fits well is all important to your enjoyment out on the slopes. Now, I'm at Sporting Life with Cam Powell, who is a boot fitting expert. Many would say a world-renowned boot fitter, working with some of the top World Cup athletes and members of the Canadian team. And Cam, we're going to talk about some of the generalities of boot fitting and uh, boots here in the store. So if somebody comes into the store and says to you, I need a new pair of ski boots and I don't know where to start, where do you start with them? Well, ideally, I try to get them up on the bench, sitting down, hopefully feeling as comfortable as they can. And we'll start by getting their shoes and socks off. So once you get their shoes and socks off, I guess you've got to get some idea of sizing. And where do you start there? The best way for us is uh, the Brannock device. We'll use a Brannock device. We'll shell size and liner size. But we'll start here first. This tells us the customer's length of foot, their arch length, and their forefoot width, both sitting down and standing up. Obviously, people's feet are very different from one foot to another, and the anatomical differences in people's feet will have a bearing on how a boot fits and how it will perform. Um, you've got the foot uncovered here. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, generally we start from the bottom up. So like a house, you start with a good foundation. And this particular foot, um, there's lots of bones in the body, and over 25% of them are below the knee. So when you've had a look at people's feet and understanding how they may be shaped a little differently, where do you go next? I would think that what they put on their foot to go into the boot has a bearing on comfort and performance as well. Yeah, warmth and comfort are key. And uh, ideally, starting with a fairly thin, lightweight sock. A sock is a transfer. This is polypropylene. But this is an excellent way to keep the moisture away from the foot, and it wicks the moisture into the liner. So you've got people in a good sock and they're going to start trying on some boots. Now there are really two parts to the boot. There's the liner and the shell and they really work together. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a bit of a marriage between the liner and the shell. It's important that the liner fits comfortably within the shell. Uh, a ski boot should fit in, for length properly. It should fit well in its width. The most important measurement is from the bottom of the heel to the top of the instep. This area is crucial in keeping the customer's heel locked and secure in the back of the boot. When it comes to the different manufacturers and the different models of boots, there are many differences in liners and shells, and we've got a couple of examples here. Tell me about those. Well, the shell that I have here is a race shell, and it's extremely narrow. This is a race plug, and what they mean by that is typically the wall thickness of the boot is thicker, and it's much narrower. So when you put this particular boot on edge, Ideally, you don't want to be hitting or skipping off the snow. So this is a very narrow platform. Along with that goes in the liner. And this is a great liner. It's a full lace liner. It fits a lot like a climbing shoe. So it snugs right up to the top of the, the forefoot. And it helps to pull the wrinkles out of the liner so you get the best fit possible. The second liner is out of a full tilt boot. And it's an intuition liner. And we put this in an oven. It's very light, extremely warm and comfortable. Then we've got something called a foam liner, and I remember getting these done as a kid, but they've come a long way over the years, haven't they? Yeah, it's, sometimes the foam expires in the old models, but this is, we just got this in a couple days ago. But it has a new venting and tubing system. It flows in through the back, and through the front, excuse me, and out through the back. So now you've got people into the right shell, uh, combined with the right liner. And their ski boots become a big investment. What can they do to add to their ski boot, both to enhance performance or maybe to protect that investment as a next step? Well, we've got aftermarket insoles. We have aftermarket additions to the shell. So this is a, on a lot of the race boots, this is a 5 mil lift. And it would get screwed onto the bottom of the boot to improve the, dur uh, the durability aspect of the boot, but also gives performance and everybody wants to go faster. You mentioned the insole, and the ones that come in the ski boot right off the shelf, they're not really the best, are they? A standard sock liner isn't worth a whole lot. It's probably, you know, 10 or 15 cents. There's not a lot of support with this particular insole. We try to get rid of these as quick as we can and try to steer or suggest that we can encompass or put the foot in a more stable and secure position. So it helps to cup, cradle the arches of the foot. 
Now the shell is something that can wear out just from walking around and uh, uh, you know there's lots of parking lots that we tromp through. What can you do to help protect your shell? Yes, yeah, some of the boots out there are getting better with aftermarket soles, uh, walk it in pads on their boots. For the older boots that might not have that, you can get better wear and tear out of your boot. This is a cat track and it just slides onto the toe and the heel of the boot and for a 19 or $20 investment, it'll get you a few more years out of your product. On the top of the boot, you often see straps, but there are aftermarket straps that can assist in performance as well. You've got one here. Yeah, the shell and liner should sort of top off nicely. And this is a, a strap called the booster strap, and they're gaining momentum. A lot of the racers and people that are looking for the most performance is a power strap that helps to top off the top of the boot so the tibia is right in contact with the front of the shell. Now one of the things that my wife always talks about is warmth and I think warmth has been something that's evolved over the years in ski boots and you don't have to be cold anymore do you? No I don't think so. It's important that the boot fits properly but to try to improve the warmth there are aftermarket heaters and this is a, a generally quite a large element and it's extremely thin. The battery, the external batteries are more solid and more durable. This one is from Conformable. It's a quick on and off and it just clips very easily onto the power strap of the boot. If you don't want to invest that much money, I guess these uh, heater systems might be a couple of hundred dollars. There is a simpler, maybe not quite as effective method, but tell me about something called the uh, boot glove. Yeah, the boot glove for under $30 is a great uh, addition to your, uh, your, your ski boot. It'll improve the core temperature of your foot by up to seven degrees. It's a neoprene overshoe that Velcros around the back to sort of keep the snow out of the toe dam or the front of the boot. So here we've got a selection of boots lined up and each one is a little bit different and really for a different type of skier. So starting at this end, tell us what the differences are in the boots. Yeah, typically this is the, the race boot from Rossi. Um, this is catered more to the master's racer or the junior fist athlete and these are typically stiffer. They provide a very snug and specific fit giving uh, the fastest time down the course possible. Now if you're a free rider and out there riding rails and going off the tabletops in the park this next boot is really interesting. The SPK is great. It's extremely comfortable. It has a wider forefoot chassis but it has a soft toe so if you miss a rail or miss a, miss a landing your toe will still be intact come the end of the day. I could have used those when I was a kid. Me too. <laughs> Something called a free ride boot next? Yeah the free ride boots are gaining a lot of popularity. They're a little bit down from the race. Typically with the free ride boot, they'll have a softer boot board. They'll have a bitter walkable sole pattern, a slight softer flex, but they'll give you all day comfort, warmth and performance. Now, if you're uh, an older guy and you want a little more walking comfort in a boot and a little more mobility, this next one might do that. Yeah, the Solomon Quest, they have a ser couple series of flexes out this year. There is a walking clip on the back of the boot that allows the boot to open up so you can walk through the mountain or to the trail or to your car a little bit easier. Ladies tend to have a different shape in the lower leg and the foot and ladies boots have really come a long way haven't they? They have. A lot of the uh, anatomy of uh, a lady's ankle and lower leg is a little bit different to that of a man and ideally with this particular boot the cuff height is a little bit lower it's sort of tuliped out a little bit so the calf doesn't get suspended in the shell. The L pads, they're L pads around the liner, the heel of the boot to give a snug and tight secure fit. And this particular Solomon boot has three positions that you can reposition the buckle to give you better heel hold and retention in the rear foot of the boot. Cam, thank you so much. There are so many considerations when it comes to your ski boots and we've learned a little bit about what it takes to get into the right boot today, but what I would advise is come and see a guy like Cam Powell, an expert who will help you get that warmth, comfort and performance out of your ski boots. I'm one of Cam's customers. I can vouch for the fact that it really does work. So come and see Cam at Sporting Life and I guarantee you'll have more enjoyment out there on the slopes.